In the previous lecture, we had discussion on conventional current and electron current and at the end of that lecture, I gave you one homework problem and in this lecture, we are going to understand the solution of that homework problem first and then we will move on with the discussion. So at the end of the last lecture, the homework problem was related to the calculation of two currents I1 and I2. In the question, it was given that electrons are moving from left to right and because of this movement of electrons, there is a current in the wire equal to 2 milliampere. And uh, using this information, we were required to calculate I1 and I2. Now the question is very easy to solve. It is all based on the basics of current direction. If you look carefully, you will find electrons are moving from left to right in the wire and electron current is the movement of electrons. Therefore, I1 is the electron current because it is in the same direction of the movement of electrons. You can see the arrow. It is matching to the direction of movement of electrons. So I1 is the electron current and if you focus on I2, you will find it is having the opposite direction of movement as compared to the movement of electrons. Therefore, I2 is the conventional current which is in the direction of positive charge movement or you can say it is in the opposite direction of electrons movement. And uh, I have given one very important point in the previous lecture. I told you that whenever we perform any circuit analysis, we always use conventional current. So whatever current given while performing the circuit analysis, it is always going to be conventional current. And in the question, it is given that 2 milliampere current is flowing through the wire. This makes 2 milliampere as the conventional current. So I2 is equal to 2 milliampere and I also gave you one point that how we can reverse the direction of the current by application of negative sign. I1 and I2 are flowing in opposite direction. So if we place negative sign in front of current I1 then it will be equal to current I2. Because when we place negative sign in front of this current, its direction will reverse and it will flow from right to left which is same for I2. Similarly, we can say I2 with negative sign will be equal to I1. We have I2, it is equal to 2 milliampere. We need I1 and from here we can get I1. This implies I1 is equal to minus 2 milliampere. So in this way we have calculated I1 and I2. Now you can notice one thing here. The current is having the magnitude. The two currents you can see have the magnitude equal to 2. And the current is also having the direction. I1 is having this direction and I2 is having this direction. So current in general we can say is having the magnitude plus it is having the direction. And we know scalar quantities are those quantities which have magnitude only. On the other hand vector quantities are those quantities which have magnitude as well as direction. So looking at the current, we can say that current is having the magnitude as well as direction, therefore it is a vector quantity. But just having the magnitude and direction does not make any given quantity vector quantity. It must also satisfy all the vector laws. Therefore, we can say that current can be a vector if it satisfies all the laws of vector. To understand this, I have taken one arrangement. In this arrangement, there are three wires. This is the first wire, 
this is the second wire and this one is the third wire and you can see current I1 is flowing in the first wire current I2 is flowing in the second wire similarly I3 in the third wire and we know according to KCL the sum of incoming currents to a point or you can say node is equal to the sum of outgoing currents there is only one current which is incoming and that is I1 and there are two currents which are outgoing I2 and I3 so I2 plus I3 is equal to I1 according to KCL we will understand what is KCL in the coming lectures but you should be having some idea about KCL and according to KCL we are having I1 equal to I2 plus I3 in this particular case and this is according to scalar theory according to scalar theory we have two currents which are outgoing when added giving us one current which is incoming so from here we are getting the idea that current is not a vector but a scalar now we will find out whether it follows the vector theory or not let's say the angle between this wire and this wire is equal to 2 theta this makes this angle equal to theta and this angle also equal to theta and uh, current i2 considering the vector will have this component equal to i2 cos theta remember we are considering the currents to be vector and similarly current i3 will have this component equal to i3 cos theta and uh, you can see i1 is equal to i2 cos theta plus i3 cos theta so we are getting current i1 equal to i2 cos theta plus i3 cos theta which is absolutely incorrect this is not correct this one is the correct result i1 is equal to i2 plus i3 not i2 cos theta plus i3 cos theta so vector laws are not followed by current therefore it is not a vector quantity but it is a scalar quantity so remember this point current is a scalar quantity and uh, now we will understand this by the help of one more example in this example you are having a television you are having a television and the television is perfectly working at this particular position this is the wire of the television and now if we consider current i is flowing to the television then the perpendicular component of this current should be zero so when we place the television to a new position this is the new position then the current flowing to the television should be zero because we have considered the current to be a vector and perpendicular to a vector its value is equal to zero so i is a vector and perpendicular to it it is equal to zero therefore when you move the television from this position to this position television should not work but in real life nothing like this happens television will work absolutely fine at this position as well therefore from this example it is again proved that current is not a vector but a scalar quantity so this is all for this lecture if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section and i will end this lecture here see you in the next one